In this session, we are going to talk about two topics, which are mole concept and chemical reactions. Now let's talk about chemical reaction first. To symbolize what happens in a reaction, we normally write what we call a chemical re reaction equation or chemical equation for short. In chemical equation, you have the so-called reactants. For instance, you have A plus B becoming C plus D. We call the A and B as reactant and C and D as products. Okay? And normally, you would also have to write the phase of each of the reactants and each of the products. For instance, A in gas phase, B also in gas phase, C in gas phase, D in gas phase. Normally, we write down uh, either one of these, solid, S, liquid, L, like water, um, gas, which is G for short, and aqueous when it's a solution with water as the solvent. We will also talk about solution today. In this reaction, A and B react with each other to form C and D. Now let's take a look at real uh, chemical equation. Here is an example of a very common reaction that uh, you see in any of chemistry textbook. You have a uh, CH4 gas that is called methane uh, being oxidized by oxygen or being uh, combusted and then it will form two different gases which is uh, carbon dioxide and uh, water gas or water vapor. Now in this case uh, we would have to balance this reaction. Balance the chemical reaction equation. How do we balance this? According to the law of conserved matters, any kind of matters, they can't be created, nor can they be destroyed. Therefore, in this case, we have carbon atom, hydrogen atom, and oxygen atom, and the number of each atoms in the system in the reactant site should be exactly the same with the corresponding, the corresponding atom on the product site. For instance, you have carbon here only one, carbon here is also only one, so that means for carbon is already balanced. Now for hydrogen, here you have four, while on the product side you only have two. Therefore, you have to multiply the H2O with two, so you get now the hydrogen atom also four at the product side. But now due to this, uh, you can also see the difference in oxygen. The oxygen on the right side is now 2 plus 2, so 4, while on the reactant side or the left side, you only have 2. Therefore, you also have to multiply the oxygen to 2. This is what we call as a balanced uh, chemical reaction equation. So for sure, you have the reactant and the product. You have them written in the right phase, and don't forget to have uh, the same number of each of the atoms on the right side or the uh, product side with the number of the atoms on the left side or the reactant side. Each of the atoms, they have to be the same for both sides. Normally, to balance the equation, uh, you would have to take each uh, one of the atoms and then you try to uh, make them equal with each other so sometimes it's also a bit of trial and error but the more you practice the more you get familiarized with the system uh, the more you're going to be able to balance the equation uh, properly let's discuss now the reaction in solution but first we have to understand uh, what a solution system is so a solution is a homogeneous system that contains what we call solute plus solvent. Solvent is the component with the largest amount. When we write the phase to be aqueous, that means the solvent is water or H2O. The solute can be 
anything. It can be salt, like sodium chloride. It could be organic uh, compound, like glucose. It could be an acid, like hydrochloric acid. Could be another acid, like the vinegar, or what we call as acetic acid and so on these are the solute of course the solute is present in smaller amount in comparison to the solvent in aqueous system we recognize the electrolytes Electrolytes are a system that is capable of conducting electricity. This occurs due to the presence of ions in the aqueous phase. Some of the compounds in nature they will become strong electrolytes and some other are weak electrolytes. How do we differentiate strong from weak electrolytes? Strong electrolytes usually comprises strong acid, strong base, strong acids, yeah, strong bases and salts. While weak electrolyte comprises weak acids and weak bases. Now in this case, you have to be able to remember and get yourself familiarized with strong acids versus weak acids, strong bases versus weak bases. Now you're looking at a table that contains a list of strong acids, strong bases, weak acids, and weak bases. Strong acids include hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, perchloric acid, hydrobromic acid, and hydroiodic acid. While strong bases include lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, and strontium hydroxide. All common strong acids and bases are shown in this list that I took from our textbook. On the other hand, you can also see the examples of weak acids, which are phosphoric acid, H3PO4, hydrofluoric acid, HF, acetic acid, or uh, the acid in vinegar, CH3COOH, hydrocyanic acid, HCN, and also weak bases like ammonia, NH3, and methylamine, CH3, NH2. Now, the weak acids and weak bases here are only some of the examples. There are many more examples of weak acids and weak bases, especially the uh, organic acids that, ha uh, that have carbon and hydrogen in um, its constituent. Now, the difference between strong acids and strong bases versus the weak ones mainly is the strong one, for instance, HCl, in water, it will dissociate completely into its ions, Cl minus and H plus. If we have weak acid like the vinegar or CH3COOH, this will only dissociate partially. So you draw an arrow that goes both ways like this because the dissociation process only occurs partially into the ions. Because the weak acids only dissociate partially, that's why we call this weak electrolytes. So weak acid are weak electrolytes 
while strong acid are strong electrolytes. The same goes for the bases. 